Today's gospel reading comes from Luke chapter 14, verses 1 through 14. Hear the word of the Lord. On one occasion, when Jesus was going to the house of a leader of the Pharisees to eat a meal on the Sabbath, they were watching him closely. Just then, in front of him, there was a man who had dropsy. And Jesus asked the lawyers and Pharisees, Is it lawful to cure people on the Sabbath or not? But they were silent. So Jesus took him and healed him and sent him away. Then he said to them, If one of you has a child or an ox that has fallen into a well, will you not immediately pull it out on the Sabbath day? And they could not reply to this. When he noticed how the guests chose places of honor, he told them a parable. When you are invited by someone to a wedding banquet, do not sit down at the place of honor, in case someone more distinguished than you has been invited by your host. And the host who invited you both may come and say to you, Give this person your place, and then, in disgrace, you would start to take the lowest place. But when you are invited, go and sit down at the lowest place, so that when your host comes, he may say to you, Friend, move up higher. Then you will be honored in the presence of all who sit at the table with you. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. He said also to the one who had invited him, When you give a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends or brothers or your relatives or rich neighbors, in case they might invite you in return, and you will be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you. For you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. One of the most famous proverbs of all, the first part is, pride goes before a fall. It's Proverbs 16, 18. It's pride goes before destruction, a haughty spirit before a fall. I think it's human nature, maybe even part of the image of God in us, that we automatically want to deflate someone who's puffing themselves up. You want to... When someone's just really building themselves up, you just want to kind of poke at that and say, you know, <laughs> come down to earth, come on. <laughs> um, there's something about an arrogant spirit that just grates against the spirit, and you just don't want to spend time with that person very much. Well, you may be surprised, but Jesus ate also. Not just with sinners, not just with tax collectors and, and regular people, but with Pharisees. Remember, Jesus has fans among the Pharisees, too. When Jesus died and all his disciples, his inner circle, deserted him, it was Nicodemus that showed up to collect his body. It was Joseph of Arimathea, both of them Pharisees who had a new tomb ready for Jesus when he passed. And they believed in secret while Jesus was ministering, but when he died, they came public, and they showed him what honor they could in his death. But this man at the party, it may not have been a friendly invite because this man with dropsy appears and the people are watching him carefully it says it could have been a family member of this prominent Pharisee but after Jesus healed him he sent him away probably not a family member or he could have just sought out Jesus for healing you know that would happen all the time Jesus healed people and sick people showed up and maybe the sick man crashed the party, but maybe he was planted there because Jesus had just healed two other people on the Sabbath. One man was 
healed in chapter 6. He had a paralyzed hand in the synagogue. And the people were outraged because Jesus healed him on the Sabbath. And when there was a woman in just the chapter before who was hunched over and stooped and she could not stand straight and Jesus set her free and she could stand up straight, the Pharisees the synagogue leader was so upset, he said, there are six days on which to be healed. Come on those days. But on the Sabbath, remain holy and do not work and don't make the master work. Jesus, with this man with dropsy, a man who was swollen with fluid somewhere in his body, and has an insatiable thirst because all the water goes somewhere and it swells up and disfigures the person. He says to him, after he's healed, healed, go your way. And he says to the Pharisees, if your son fell into a well on the Sabbath, wouldn't you lift them out on that day? Wouldn't that even be the right thing to do? If one of your animals falls into a well. Isn't it the right thing to do to rescue that animal and give it its freedom that day? And don't you every Sabbath untie your ox and lead it to water so that it can drink? It's the right thing to do. But they were watching him anxiously saying, is he going to heal on the Sabbath? Is he going to do work on the Sabbath? Because that's against the law. In the commentary of the Gospel of Luke, it says, Dropsy refers to a bodily swelling due to excess of fluid. It causes insatiable thirst in the body that is already retaining too much fluid. Dropsy was used as a metaphor for greed. The same condition which the Pharisees were criticized for by Jesus in Luke 11 and Luke 16. The presence of this dropsical man would constitute a vis vis vivid parable of Jesus' socially elite parasitical table companions. Just as in front of Jesus stood a man who had dropsy so around the table sat persons whose disorder was no less self-detrimental. As Jesus moves to heal the one, so with regard to the others, is diagnosed, pro diagnosis pronounced and the prospect of health extended. So the sick man with insatiable thirst and swelling is healed. But there are spiritually sick people who are swollen with pride and the lust for power and presence, and Jesus gives them the cure. These are people just like us. One well, might hate to admit it, but everybody loves praise. I love to be honored and recognized. It's part of being human. It's a need to be valued, a need to be loved. So we invite people that we value to our dinner parties, people who we know are funny and enjoyable to spend time with, people we know will invite us back and we can have another good time later. We invite the right people that will improve our fellowship and can invite us back someday. And we invite those who invited us so that we can repay a debt because we don't want to owe to anybody. These are social conventions. They're the right thing to do. But Jesus turns that on its head and says, don't just invite those people, your relatives that you love, the, the powerful, the rich, that can invite you back. Invite those who can never repay you back. Friends, in Jesus' day, food wasn't that plentiful. It was an agricultural society, and on a bumper year, you could feed everyone. But if there was drought, if there was something wrong, you couldn't. And only the rich could do that. So, 
Tenhill, on his commentary in Luke, says, A feast was a display of wealth and power. It was a way to maintain your elite status in society. The guest list was important for the invitation indicated that one was accepted as a member of the elite. Family members and important people of the community needed to be honored in this way, and they would be expected to reciprocate and invite you back. It might be a source of honor for somebody to give charity to the poor, but it's quite another thing to invite them to a social function as honored guests as a place of family and people of wealth, and eat with them. By doing this, the host is dishonoring his family and his rich neighbors, and in their place is honoring the poor. Or in the eyes of an elite, the host is dishonoring themselves by identifying the poor. Those who invite family and people of status are exalting themselves and proclaiming their place. Those who invite the poor and crippled are humbling themselves. And it's no wonder after that word, Jesus says, in verse 11, For all those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. You see, Jesus was a lot like the Pharisees. He radically kept the law. He observed the Torah as best as he could. But Jesus keeps the law in a completely different way. He associates with a rabble that the Pharisees would never associate with. The Pharisees want Jesus, like them, to exclude the sinners and associate with only the learned and the wise and the just. Jesus' contemporaries had a lot of baggage. We don't carry as much, but you know what? We're much the same. We all understand the importance of who we eat with. And there's nothing like lunchtime at school that says who you are and what block, what community, what group you belong to. You're either part of the elite or you're one of the nobodies. You might be a band geek. You might be a scholar, but who you sit with proclaims who you are. Jesus redefines the beloved of God, who changes the guest list, and calls us to do the same and say, even if they look dirty, would you invite them to my table? Even if they don't smell quite right, Will you invite them to my table? Because I value them. I love them. You know, most of us don't mind contributing to a good cause. We want to give to feed the homeless. We want to give to take care of the needs of people. We agree with the Pharisees it's important to give charitably. But it's another thing to stop, to serve the poor, to sit down and eat with them and hear their stories and get to know them. It's completely different, right? Because sometimes they don't smell right. Nobody likes to sit next to an ugly smell. And it's an ocean call for a popular kid, for a kid who's one of the normal kids, to sit down with one of the kids who's an outcast, who gets teased every day, who doesn't have many friends, and say, hey, how you doing? It's an ocean to bridge. Friends, I want to tell you today, we're not one of the popular kids. We're not one of the elite in the circles of life. It was Jesus who was Lord of all creation, 
who humbled himself, who came to the earth and gave himself and said, come to my table, eat from my table. The price has been paid in full and you are more than welcome. I don't care that you can never pay me back. I want you at my dinner table. Today as we take communion, let's give thanks that God has invited us, not because we're the socially elite, not because we stand on par with Christ, but because simply he loves us and has called us to dine with him. Amen. Amen. And next month, when we take communion again, would you consider inviting somebody else? Somebody maybe who says, I can't go in the church. God would strike me with lightning. <laughs> I can't go to church. You don't know the things I've done. Would you invite somebody who doesn't think that they believe it or deserve it? Because God has paid the price. Jesus has paid every price and has invited all of us to his kingdom. Amen?